Lawyers in Pennsylvania are asking the U.S. Supreme Court to review the ruling that overturned Bill Cosby's sexual assault conviction. The former actor was released in June following a ruling by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. The justices said Cosby's due process rights were violated. He served a total of three years in prison. If the U.S. Supreme Court overturns the ruling that freedom, Cosby could return to jail. That's right. Here to break this issue down for us is former federal prosecutor Jim Trusty. Jim, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us here on Morning Rush. Sure. So, Jim, how likely is it that the Supreme Court will actually pick up this case? Pretty slim. Uh, when you look at it as a kind of a national phenomenon, only about 1 to 3 percent of the cases where a petition for certiorari are filed is are actually accepted by the Supreme Court. And I think if you look at the issue in this case, it's more of a state issue than it is a federal. So that probably puts it closer to 1% chance. Tell us more about their central argument and what you make of it. Well, it's interesting, you know, when the trials happened, remember there was two trials and the, the issue that grabbed everybody was whether or not there was an error in allowing multiple victims to testify, a number of victims whose cases had already lapsed under the statute of limitations. That was the legal issue that everybody was kind of wondering about because in the first trial, the judge said no other victims. In the second trial, he said essentially pick your best five. And that seemed to make a difference between the hung jury and the conviction. Well, underneath all of this was this issue of Bruce Castor, the former district attorney in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, issuing a public statement that there was insufficient evidence to proceed against Bill Cosby. And the reason he did that was simply to eliminate Cosby's Fifth Amendment privilege in the civil litigation. In other words, you, know, you can't take five if you have no likelihood of being prosecuted. Castor thought it would be more helpful in the civil case, in the face of a very weak criminal case, to just go ahead and put it on record that there would be no criminal case and eliminate a Fifth Amendment privilege. Well, Cosby relied on that and answered questions in the deposition that were really damning. I mean, talking about drugging women, about sexual escapades. And I always remember thinking, why in the world was he so honest? This is kind of amazing, saying all these damaging things, which the new prosecution team used in Montgomery County during the criminal trials. And that was the problem, which is whether or not he had effectively been given immunity by a public statement given by the district attorney to overcome his Fifth Amendment privilege and um, it was an, an easy winner for the defense in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Well, if the Supreme Court doesn't hear the case, then what happens next? Nothing. Uh, you know, we go back to status quo. Cosby served a little bit of his sentence. He was originally given a three to ten year sentence in Pennsylvania's kind of indeterminate sentencing scheme. He served some time. But uh, if the Supreme Court doesn't buck the odds and take this case, it's all over for the criminal matter. Former Montgomery District Attorney Kevin Steele, who prosecuted Cosby, said this could have, quote, negative consequences beyond Montgomery County and Pennsylvania. Could it? And, and bottom line here, do you think Cosby remains a free man when this is over? Yeah, I actually think he probably does. Uh, you know, it's not, not necessarily the happiest message to give to your uh, viewers this morning. But look, the bottom line is it's a very unusual circumstance. I mean, to have a prosecutor grant immunity in this kind of strange way of putting it out there in a public statement. That's a strange mechanism for giving a defendant immunity, but that's not the type of thing the Supreme Court necessarily wants to weigh in on. If, if Pennsylvania is okay with that process, there's no reason for a federal court to jump in. So I think there's a, you know, the, the, the state's attorney's office has to kind of pump it up and say that there's a whole bunch of potential confusion. But these were very unusual facts, very unusual circumstances. And I just think it's highly unlikely that they're going to take it up in the Supreme Court. Yeah, it's really hard for people to swallow to your point, but we have a process for a reason and, and we got to stick to it. Yeah. yeah, good point. Former federal prosecutor Jim Trustee, we appreciate your time today. Thanks so much for joining us. Sure, good to see you. And you.